see the gear, the artwork. What's up, world? You ready for this fucking smoke? My album's dropping in 10... Welcome to the deep dive. Um, today we're uh, we're diving into some, some serious stuff. We're talking about Sean Diddy Combs and the allegations against him, really heavy stuff. Yeah, this is... This is big. It's not just, you know, your typical celebrity scandal. We're talking about potential patterns of abuse. Yeah. And and not just like a couple of incidents. We're talking decades. Decades. And that's why we're uh, we're really doing a deep dive here. We've got this expose and, uh, you know, we're going to break it all down. We're talking five new lawsuits, five. five, each one accusing Combs of of just awful acts, rape, drugging, sodomy. There's even accusations of threats to kill. Yeah, and, and the thing is, these are serious accusations. We're talking potentially life-altering consequences if he's found guilty. Absolutely. And, you know, it's important to say right off the bat, these are allegations Combs has maintained his innocence, but we have to look at this. So so where do we even begin? Well, chronologically, the earliest incident we've got is from uh, 2004. 04. A okay. yeah. 19-year-old woman claims she was invited to this photo shoot and then basically lured up to Combs' hotel room at the Marriott in Manhattan. Okay, so she's young, she's maybe starstruck, wants to be in this world. Right. And the invitation, it wasn't just, hey, come on up. It was for a more exclusive party, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> like, you're special, come be a part of this inner circle. Oh, that's how they get you. That's a classic tactic, right? Mm -hmm. The allure of exclusivity, especially in an industry known for, you know, using and abusing ambition. And it gets worse. She claims she was taken to a separate room Away from the party, doors locked. That's where the alleged assault happened. I mean, it just sends chills down your spine. It really does. That detail about the separate room, the locked door, it's about control. It's about isolating someone, making them feel powerless. Oh. And sadly, this isn't the only time a white party is mentioned. Oh, no. In 2006, another alleged victim claims Combs drugged and sodomized him in a van outside of one of these parties. And what got to me was the detail about him pleading for help. Pleading for help. Saying no, stop, over and over. But according to him, he was just ignored. That's awful. Does it say who else was there? Were there any witnesses? That's what's so disturbing. He was in a van, isolated. But, you know, this isn't the only time this theme comes up. In 1998, another alleged victim, just 16 years old at the time, claimed Combs made unwanted sexual advances at another white party. Another white party? Makes you wonder about the environment at these events. Who else was present, you know? It's a pattern, these white parties. It's a common thread in many of these accusations. And, and the accusations don't stop there. In 1995, another woman alleges that at a party for Biggie Small's One More Chance music video, Combs assaulted and raped her. And it wasn't just, no, I don't want to do this. She describes being physically assaulted, her head slammed against a wall, brutal. Yeah, and that's a significant escalation. We're not mm -hmm. just talking about unwanted advances. This is violence. This is about power and control taken to a whole other level. Yes, yeah. horrible. And then there's the most recent accusation. This one's from 2008. A man alleges that Combs sexually assaulted him in a Macy's stockroom. In Macy's. Macy's. In broad daylight. Are you kidding me? This wasn't some mansion party. This was a public place. It's bold, to say the least. Yeah. It's almost as if there was this belief that this behavior would go unchecked, even in a place like that. It's unbelievable. And we have to reiterate, these are allegations. Right. Combs has denied any wrongdoing, and, and his legal team has not commented on these specific claims. Right. But we're talking about serious, serious accusations. And, you know, regardless of what happens in court, the potential impact here is huge for Combs, for the music industry. It's a lot to process. So you think, you know, what allowed this to go on for so long? Yeah, we're talking about potentially decades, decades of alleged abuse. Oh, well. And it really makes you question the power dynamics in the music industry, right? You've got someone like Diddy at the top, all this influence, all this wealth. And it's like a microcosm of the whole world, isn't it? The power imbalances, the way people use that power to silence others. That's about control. Exactly. And the thing is, these allegations, they force a reckoning. It's not something you can ignore anymore. No, not these days. People are demanding accountability. And it's not just about Combs, right? It's ah. about the whole system. Were there signs, warnings that people ignored? Were there systems in place that failed? These are tough questions, but we have to ask them. We do. And that brings us to Tony Busby. He's the lawyer representing all of these alleged victims. And he's, well, he's not afraid of a fight. No, he's gone up against some big names, big institutions. And when he gets involved, 
You know it's serious. And he's claiming to represent over 100 people in cases related to Combs. Over 100. Over 100. That's what he's saying. Wow. That's not just a few isolated incidents then. No, no. That suggests something much bigger. And there's more. He says he has a list. A list of Combs' alleged accomplices. People he says will shock the public. What do you make of that? It's a bombshell, if it's true. Who are these people? What did they know? If Busby has the goods, this could bring down a lot more than just Diddy. It's like something out of a movie, right? Secret lists, powerful figures, cover-ups. Except this is real life. And it makes you think about this idea of a culture of complicity. Oh. Did people look the other way? Did they actively participate in silencing victims? Those are the questions investigators will be asking. Exactly. And we haven't even touched on Combs's other legal troubles, right? Oh, right. Back in September, he was arrested on charges of sex trafficking, racketeering. Prostitution. We're talking serious charges. And racketeering. That's not a word you hear every day. What does that even mean in this context? Basically, it means engaging in illegal activities as part of an organization. Like, it's not just a one-off thing. It's a pattern of criminal behavior, mm -hmm. often used in organized crime cases. But it can apply to other situations, too. So you're saying it could suggest these alleged acts weren't isolated, but part of something bigger, more organized? And Combs is currently being held without bail for those September charges, right? That's right. Which usually means the judge sees him as a flight risk or a danger to the community. It's not a good sign. No, it isn't. Yeah. I mean, they're taking those charges very seriously. So we've got these past charges, no bail, and now these new lawsuits, each one with these disturbing accusations. It's a lot to take in. And, you know, we've been talking about Combs, but we can't forget about the alleged victims in all of this. That's right. To come forward with accusations like these, especially against someone as powerful as Diddy, it takes immense courage. It does. And often victims suffer in silence for years. They're afraid to speak out, afraid they won't be believed. It's a sad reality. It is. And it's a reminder that it's never too late to come forward. No one is above the law, no matter how rich or famous they are. It makes you wonder, you know, how much of this is about, like, protecting the industry itself. It's a huge part of it, right? The music industry, entertainment, it's all about image. Mm. And and sometimes protecting that image means silencing the people who are hurt. Yeah. It's like someone always gets sacrificed, and it's usually the person with the least amount of power. And that makes me think, like, are we the fans partly to blame, too, you know, for not wanting to see this side of things? That's the question we all have to ask ourselves, isn't it? When we listen to the music, buy the albums, go to the shows, are we in a way, supporting a system that allows this to happen. It's tough to think about. But maybe instead of just being fans, we need to be more aware. Exactly. Informed. We need to hold these artists accountable, but also the industry as a whole. We need to support the organizations that are fighting for change. Right. Speaking up for the people who have been silenced, donating to organizations, helping survivors. Absolutely. And putting pressure on these companies, these labels. Mm. Make them show us that they're taking this seriously, mm. that they're actually doing something to protect people. So where does this all leave Sean Diddy Combs? I mean, we've got these accusations piling up. This legal battle is going to be intense. It's going to be a long road. And, you know, even if he's found innocent in a court of law, there's a court of public opinion, too. Right. The court of public opinion. And that's something that, you know, money can't buy. No, it can. And this whole situation, it's a wake-up call for the music industry. It is a big one. It's time to face those demons, have those hard conversations, and for us listening, it's a reminder to keep asking questions, to not be afraid to speak up, and to support the people who are brave enough to come forward. That's what it comes down to, speaking up. That's it for this deep dive. It was a heavy one, but important. Until next time, stay curious, stay engaged, and keep fighting the good fight. Oh, 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 o